Welcome to Writing Daily. This is Devin. As many of you know, every day we get together to talk about some component of writing to help you write more, write better, uh, finish your work, put yourself out there, a whole slew of writerly things that we have to do to kind of live the writer's lifestyle, to embody the business of what it is to be a writer. And so we kind of cover all this stuff. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Devin Galladay. I'm the editor-in-chief of In the Know Traveler, and I am the author of the forthcoming memoir, 10,000 Miles with My Dead Father's Ashes. If you're new, please consider clicking the like button furiously or the wow button. Uh, that lets me know that I'm on the right track. Welcome, Cynthia. Welcome, Thomas. It's great to have you here. And so today, I am disheveled. This is actually my first day back after a couple of days because uh, my life, uh, I, I went out of town for a few days, and so I am uh, a little bit disheveled, still kind of getting back from Memorial uh, Day weekend. I hope everybody had a great time. And today's episode actually comes to us uh, in part from point number one of five, tip, five tips for writing a memoir uh, by a writer named Will Boost. Uh, this original article is found on Publishers Weekly. Um, and so I'm going to, I think, I, first off, I'm going to read his point, and then I'm going to read how he describes it, and then I'm going to tell you how how important and influential this tip is I think to writing as a whole, specifically if you're going the memoir route. Anyway, his point number one is this. If fiction is the art of invention, memoir is the art of selection and arrangement. And he goes on to say, for whatever reason, many readers and writers believe that memoir or writing a memoir is easier than writing a novel. It's all happened already the thinking seems to go, so you have to do is just put it on the page. If only, he writes. Uh, as I once heard Joyce Carol Oates remark, beginning a memoir is like having a dump truck pull up beside you and tip a couple tons of garbage on your head. Writing about your own life or family, everything suddenly seems relevant, from the most dramatic events to the smallest ephemera. I know I'm not the only writer to have had drafted hundreds more pages than I needed, writing out whole episodes, many of them revealing earth-shaking of the most utmost vital importance, etc., that I would eventually just cut, realizing that they didn't add to the narrative emerging from the morass of pages I was accumulating. I think it took me a year at least before I stopped suffocating under all the stuff that goes into memoir and starting to find among the debris the struts and beams that would form the structure the structure of a story. So uh, first off, this is a bomb advice uh, or a bomb experience that he's kind of throwing at you. This is probably the number one thing that when I talk about memoir, this is what I do. And by the way, Marco, Allison, Elizabeth, uh, Morgana, and Kelly, great to have you here. It's always a wonder and excitement to have uh, people join us. So that all said, uh, I think what's really important to, to take away here is that when you're talking about your life, you have to consider sort of like a particular story. I mean, I think it's one thing to have a collection of anecdotes, sort of like these little encapsulated nuggets that don't necessarily have to relate to each other. But I think if you're telling a long story, in other words, you're writing a memoir, something that's going to be, you know, sort of like the final process, you're thinking it's going to be, you know, 200 pages, 300 pages, you have to start taking the, the, uh, the reader into account. And so you have to make sure that you keep, uh, there's some sort of direction that we're going. You know what I mean? In other words, what's great about memoir is there's usually like, I want to point out these horrible things that go on in my life, follow me over the hill. And more often than not, folks are going to be willing to, to, to march up the hill with you as long as you give them a reason to march, as long as you give them a reason to like the character, uh, even if the character does bad things. And when I say character, I'm usually talking about A, me, or I'm talking about B, my family. 
and or somebody who's directly involved in the story of my life, as an example. So I think it's really important to kind of be able to give uh, sort of like some sort of a direction, some sort of a cohesion uh, to whatever it is that you're writing. And, and sadly, when writing memoir, that cohesion may not be, you may not know what that cohesion is on page one. As I've talked about many times, I finished my uh, memoir at 86,000 words, 86, 87,000 words. And by the time I felt it was ready to be going to, you know, publishers and agents, it was more like 71,000. So that means I already cut out 15,000 words just on my own volition, just on my own volition. Uh, and so it kind of needed to be chipped away, like a, a sculptor is going to be chipping away at a block of of stone until the image, until this piece starts revealing itself. And I think that kind of what happens. In other words, I think the stories that I that I ended up pulling out of my memoir were great stories individually, but didn't necessarily add new information to the story that I was telling. And I think that's kind of a crucial bit for anybody who's doing this kind of work is that you want to be adding new information, something that is going to be making the, the characters more compelling, uh, more lifelike. So you can, so that character is there for you. So you can really feel and participate in what that character is offering. And and I think these are sort of like crucial elements. But so when we talk about this this idea of memoir, and to go back to uh, what the uh, I think his name is Will Will boasts, uh, we are talking about sort of like the art of selecting. So what that means is is you're choosing things that are going to be kind of adding to or or promoting a particular point. And it might be about, you know, mom and dad were terrible, how awful they were. And so it might be that. And so you're allowed to include those stories. As a matter of fact, you're allowed to include a lot of those stories. But I think it's important to recognize that we're not necessarily just saying, we're not piling on to mom and dad and saying a bunch of terrible things about them. That's not a book. That's, a, that's fodder for your therapist. I think what you want to be able to do is like say, okay, here's a bad experience. But then we want to see the parents as not being totally evil because they, in most cases, they're not totally evil. They're just flawed. They're human. And, and our reactions to these things are also flawed. So we might say, hey, okay, here's, here's a bad parenting story. And here's a good parenting story. And here's a, a funny parenting story. And here's a story where I got it all wrong because I'm flawed too. And here's a story where I look like a complete idiot. And I think by the end of it, when we start getting into uh, ideas and notions of transformation, or when we start getting to the crux of the story or the message that we want to relay to our audience, we want to make sure that we have like fully rounded, articulated characters that your readers are going to give a crap about, right? In other words, my story isn't anything unless I have invited the reader to participate in what my life is really about, warts and all. It's not just here I am to be an object of pity. I'm here to be presenting something that hopefully will be universal enough where you can jump in and participate and hopefully enjoy yourself. Uh, so how do you write an interesting memoir without destroying your current relationships? Well, that's a great question. I think, I think what it is is that when you're writing a memoir, oh, and by the way, this was a, a question that appeared. And by the way, always feel free to ask questions. I always want to hear from you, whether we are live together or not. I think what you have to do is you have to tell the truth and you have to, I, I think what I try to attempt to do is, you know, recognize, Hey, here are the, here are the things that flawed, flawed things that humans did to me that I was not necessarily a fan of. And then at the same time, what I tried to do is kind of take responsibility for my part in the stuff in the stuff that happens. So I can kind of, I invited you to go, okay, here, here I am looking bad. A matter of fact, probably more than anybody else, I would say I probably look worse than anybody else. I mean, remember my story is ridiculous. So I wanted you to know ridiculousness and it's not a story that is intended to just be finger pointing. I think when we get into finger pointing, that's where we start upsetting our family members where I'm just like, you're a jerk face and they're jerks and everybody should hate them. 
And I don't think that's what good memoir does. I think good memoir takes, uh, a good memoirist takes responsibility for all the, the stuff that we do. Anyway, so we're at our 10 minute mark, which means I think we've covered enough stuff. So if you are writing, this is about going to be selecting the stuff. Oh, we didn't even get into really the second half of that statement, which has to do with the arrangement portion. Uh, you know what? I think we might save that for tomorrow. We might start talking about the organization of a memoir because very, very rarely are good memoirs written in some sort of a chronological order. Um, that might be just our teaser for tomorrow, uh, but know that for the most part, you get to go into other directions with your memoir and time, space, and motion doesn't necessarily lend credibility to a well-written memoir. So we'll talk about our organization tomorrow, I think. Anyway, that's what I've got. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and as always, we're going to be doing some uh, writing daily stuff tomorrow because writing is something we do daily to get it all done. As always, by the way, if you go to uh, devangalladay.com forward slash dad and you join me, uh, I give away free books and I do some fun things and there's going to be more giveaways coming up in the very near future. So join me for that. And of course, consider liking this page and uh, I'm grateful for you guys today. And that's what I got. So enjoy. And we will talk to you tomorrow with more writing daily.